guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the YouTube account and we are continuing the Rocky Day guides and this time we're going to go through and we're going to break down the Wilders. Now I got a lot of feedback about the guides and how they want me to actually break down um, the heroes that are within here, really showing and showcasing which ones are on the tier list. So let's take a look at the guide. All right, guys, so here we are with the Wilders recommended investment. Again, I'm going to go through and kind of say and show you the, the logic behind these builds and also which heroes you really do need to build. Big shout out to Rockaday again for these guides over on Reddit. Now, looking at the first one, a star. A star is an absolute priority, guys. Not only does she do a considerable amount of damage, but she also does have some um, damage reduction, which helps the team actually shields the team. Pretty good overall. So you can see plus 30 signature item is good. Um, plus 20 is really very good where you've got to build them kind of as the very minimal point. Getting the 9 of 9 furniture on Peanut is very strong. And then the E60 is very good. So the E60 actually gives her a much um, needed boost to the damage mitigation factor. Even though the basic one does work pretty well, the plus or the E60 does provide a considerable amount of the damage mitigation when it comes to a star. Now looking at Iran, now he was a priority once upon a time. Um, if you're still using the five pole, which is really prevalent, the only place that it's still used is within uh, the campaign, which I don't know the last time that we've used him within the campaign. Um, even sees, seems like with some of the Lucretia comps, we're not seeing a big push for Iran. Early game, he might make a big difference. You can see the plus 30 is very good. It does um, extend the duration of his crowd control. Three of nine is what you need. The E30 on him will work for that crowd control aspect. Now the nine of nine, you might get it eventually, but not a big thing. And then of course the E60, not a big difference or not a big reason to really build him out as he is not one of the top priority heroes. Now looking at Orin, he is one of the absolute very um, solid priority heroes. You can see plus 30, very good. Nine of nine, very good. E60, very good. He is a hero you absolutely, without a doubt, want to build. Um, we see him subbed into a lot of formations, taking actually the place of the Awakened version of Thane. If you don't have that Awakened hero built, um, he does fill that slot and fills it incredibly well. He is still best in slot in a couple of other formations as well, which again, really makes him a driving force when it comes to the tower. Absolutely used in there as well, guys. He does provide some crowd control. He does provide some crit points, some attack boost. Um, really, really strong, solid hero to build. I feel like when he came out, he didn't get a lot of spotlight. A lot of players didn't like him, nor did they build him. And now he has really found his place in the AFK arena. Again, him and a star, two of the heroes that are an absolute priority to build out within AFK arena. Now looking at Gorbo, you can see guys, the plus 20 is good. That is where I haven't built. And the only place I haven't built is that plus 20. Plus 30, nine of nine and E60 is bad. Even the three of nine and the 30 is average. Now overall, with his crowd control, um, short of the Wilder Tower, you're not gonna see him used anywhere. He does have a little bit of synergy with shielding formations, but again, he doesn't do enough with the crowd control, doesn't do enough with the shielding. Um, that really makes a, a big difference when it comes to different game modes, he is not used. Now again, within the tower, it does make it a lot easier because there you can just auto battle. You can continue running tower formations over and over and over. Um, similar to we, what we see in the campaign, the towers, you can farm the towers. Even if you have them a little underdeveloped within the Wilder Tower, you can just run the towers over and over. Now, Kaz, of course, good, good on a plus 30, and the E30 is good. The rest of it is kind of average. Again, she is another hero that is not utilized within any aspect of AFK Arena, short of possibly the towers if you do have her built. Very similar to Gorbo, there's not a big reason to build the hero just because of where they're kind of situationally within AFK Arena. You're not you're not needing to um, invest your signature item furniture and engraving on heroes that you're not gonna see a lot of utility out because we have so many heroes in AFK Arena. Now Lorzen is one that you do wanna build. And as you can see guys, the 209 is really where you wanna get him. Um, the plus 20 signature item gives him a little bit of an immunity, which is good. Also, we have the haste factor that he does, but mainly he is used for the linking that we see within there. Now, the 9 of 9 furniture is really good as well, um, which I know a lot of players do kind of, um, kind of disregard him, but he is still in an incredible amount of formations when it comes to campaign formations, utilized within the Thorn Cheese, utilized in a couple bosses with that linking mechanism to actually amplify the damage. 
plus his ultimate ability does allow some more damage amplification, which is very good. Now engraving, he doesn't need. And again, that nine of nine furniture, plus 20, plus 30, you can eventually get him to 30, not really a big driving force. Um, but the 209 is really where you want to get Lorzen. And Lorzen is a hero that will work without being built. Um, still a little bit of a higher priority when it comes to the Wilders. And then we have Leica. You can see, guys, the plus 20 is good. The 9 of 9 is very good. That is where you want to build her. So Leica is still used in a lot of different formations for the awe ability. Um, she is run hand-in-hand -hand with Zolrath. is where we do see her um, more, more recently than, than anywhere else. Plus 20 is going to give her the damage. The plus 30 gives her a little bit more accuracy, which again, situational, doesn't really make a big difference in a lot of different places. Now, the 3 of 9 and the 9 of 9 furniture are what really make and drive her force as well as that awe ability because it allows her to actually hit multiple enemies. With the multiple enemies, she can actually put the debuff on a lot of different enemies. Um, also, with the auto attack, you want to get the debuff up. It is what gives, um, a, it nerfs the enemy's defense rating and it also gives critical damage which is the reason why players still do run Leica. Now Leica is an absolute priority within AFK Arena. So looking here guys we have um, Orin, we have Leica, and we have a star which are priority builds for the Wilder Faction. Alright guys moving on to page two we have Mishka. You can see the plus 20 is very good. The 9 of 9 furniture is good and the E60 falls into the top tier which I think this is probably the first top tier that we've seen. Now, overall, Mishka is still a hero that is used a lot in AFK Arena, um, especially if you are free to play. We are still seeing uh, Mishka subbed into a lot of different formations. The plus 20 does a big attack damage increase, which is the reason that we build it. Plus 30 just really does a little bit more with the survivability. Now, the 9 of 9 furniture is really the big one because what happens is when one of her wolves die, she actually ults. When the second wolf dies, she will ult again. And then, of course, the E60 engraving gives healing and shielding to your entire team, guys, which, again, is super, super strong. Now, one thing to note is with Nevi's ability, which we'll be looking at in a minute, um, Nevi actually buffs up the wolves that Mishka has, um, it, as well as a couple other things, making Mishka and Nevi two of the top priority heroes. So an absolute hero to build, guys. Mishka is super important with formations. Now we look at Nomura, you can see guys very bad down the list, except the 9 of 9, which is very good. Now once upon a time, the 9 of 9 does um, trigger Nomura's Beguile ability. Um, it's very situational at this point. There's no reason to really build Nomura. I don't even use her, and I do have her at the 9 of 9 furniture. Again, the, the healing scales with attack rating. Her attack rating is super low, which makes her healing almost negligible. Um, a lot of players, again, just ran her once upon a time. For the the beguile or the furniture which again this point of afk arena i don't even use her within the campaign formations possibly within the tower again j just really as a filler hero as an insta charm hero that's really it not really a big driving force to build out namora now when it comes to nevi very good very good very good that is right guys nevi needs a full build and she is well worth it she is a hero that is still best in slot in a lot of different formations she has a lot of healing. Um, she also dispels a lot of buffs, also cancels some healings. She also does with the E60, um, buffs up summoners, 8% uh, attack boost, 6% haste, which can stack on the, the hero when an enti entity dies. So looking at the Awakened version of Solus, looking at a few different heroes, um, Nevi can buff up. She is very strong with her skills and abilities, which make her an absolute priority to build within AFK Arena. Now, looking at Oku, average, good, and, and very bad right there. Um, he is a tank that is used, I mean, exclusively at this point within the Wilder Tower. Um, even if you don't have him built, you can have a couple other fillers in there that will work well. Um, Oku does require a significant investment to get him to work. Just the methodology behind him. But again, short of the tower, you're not going to see him used anywhere. Not used in campaign. Cursed Realm, Twisted Realm, Nightmare Corridor, Treasure Scramble. Um, Oku is not used in those game modes at all. Again, not a huge priority to build out Oku. Now, when it comes to Pippa, Pippa is very good with a plus 20 signature item. And the only place that she is really there is the An An um, Ancestral Shift ability, which, of course, is the set for Thorin. Um, you could use her in the tower if you do build her up a little bit. 
but the plus 20 signature item is all, really all that she needs so she can actually teleport Thorin to where he needs to be within the formations. Again, another hero short of the Wilder Tower, not really seeing a lot of utility. Once upon a time, she was in the portal party, but as of now, that team um, has kind of broken apart, so we really don't see it anymore. Again, not a big priority to really build out Pippa. Now, when it comes to Raku, you can see, guys, very good top tier, good and very good and good. Overall, Raku is another hero, guys, that has a high priority to actually be built. Big reason is he puts out an incredible amount of damage. When he puts some buffs behind him, he will put even more. A lot of players do run him with the Phantasm Moth. Um, the Moth will actually buff him up. He is still used in best in slot teams, um, some of the top tier teams. He is still the damage dealer, I believe, Cursed Realm Nightmare Corridor. Um, again, if you don't have the Whale teams, Raku still has a lot of utility in those formations. And he is also going to be one of the driving forces when it comes to damage within the Wilder Tower. Um, he fills one of the slots of the damage dealer, similar to what we see with Orin within those formations. Absolutely, guys, Raku is probably the top priority, um, short of the Awakened version of Solus, to build when it comes to our um, Wilder heroes. Looking at Ruspin, Ruspin is, you know, decent overall, but again, Ruspin has been kind of tied to the towers. Once upon a time, he was used in a bunch of PvP formations. Because of the haste that he does provide at this point, not really any utility with Respin, not really a need to build him. Again, once you start getting to multiple teams in the tower, if you have him, great. If you don't, there's just going to be other heroes that you're essentially going to put in his place because there's not a big priority. As we continue to see more heroes being released, a lot of these heroes will just fall further down the tier list. Now looking at Soros, Soros the plus 30 is very good. Um, the engraving on him and also... The furniture does provide a little bit of survivability for him, but overall, Soros used to be an absolute boss killer long before Scarlet, long before the Awakened version of Belinda. Um, he has been replaced essentially by them, even Ainz. When Ainz came out, he replaced a lot of the formations that we've seen with Soros. However, we are still seeing Soros in a couple different modes. Again, kind of a basic build on him to get him to that plus 30 signature item is really all that you need. That's exactly where I have him built at. Um, just for the simple fact that there are some formations where his utility, because of that plus 30 signature item, he can actually heal um, all of the allies and keep an entire team alive as long as he doesn't get crowd controlled with his buffs. Because if he is crowd controlled, he will actually drop his buffs in there and he will not be able to heal the allied teams. Which again, a little bit of a situational, but when it comes to the tower, players do still run Soros religiously in the tower because... Again, utility-wise, he still does make sense. All right, guys, and then the final one we get in here, you see Cirrus right here, very bad. Um, absolutely no reason to build Cirrus. His signature item worked for a little bit um, when he actually came out because it increased the max health, but overall, there's nowhere he is being utilized, guys. I have him on my account at level one. I do not even use him within the tower. He literally just sits there, no reason to build out Cirrus. Um, same with Solus. Solus, the plus 30, the 9 of 9, the E60, just, you have to have her fully built out, even if you just want to get to the good rating. Um, at this point, there is no reason to build out Solus at all. Floral Spectre was really the downfall that we've seen with this hero. It summoned a flower that died instantly when you started getting into level deficiencies, which actually made her utility go down dramatically. I, I really had high hopes when she came out. But overall, guys, Solus is another hero not really used anywhere within AFK Arena. Now, looking at Tamaris, Tamaris is a hero and it is a guy. Um, it is a male character. You can see very good top tier good. Now, the big thing with Tamaris is the furniture, guys. That 9 of 9 furniture actually provides his enthusiasm buff to the entire team. Now, the enthusiasm buff stacks up to 10 times. It has a 4% increase attack rating, which gives a 40% team-wide damage boost when this is fully stacked, guys, which makes Tamaris off the charts um, as a buffer. Works incredibly, incredibly well um, when it comes to this furniture, which is the reason it is an absolute top tier. Now, looking at the 20 and the 30, both of them are very good. Then, of course, the engraving. Building that up a little bit, again, the survivability, you don't want Tamaris to die off of the bat. Now, Tamaris is a hero within the Wilder faction that is a very, very solid priority to build. 
um, absolutely one hero you want to use. Still utilizing the Treasure Scramble, the Curse Rum, the Nightmare Corridor. Tamaris as a buffer is still being used in a lot of different game modes. Now, when it comes to Tassie, um, you can see the Three of Nine is really the only thing, only place that I see Tassie now that is being utilized is within the Wilder Tower, which again, kind of used as a filler. Um, every now and then we do also see her on a Curse Realm boss, um, which I believe is just for the attack rating debuff that she provides to really lower the boss's damage. But overall, I believe at this point with the heroes that we have, she has been fully replaced, I believe at this point. So again, short of utilizing her within the tower, there's not gonna be a reason to build her at all. Um, same with Almus. Almus, unfortunately, you can see bad and very bad kind of across the board. Um, he was kind of a tank crossover healer um, with a crowd control aspect. Unfortunately, they didn't scale his his um, stats high enough to really have the, the survivability or the viability within AFK Arena, so he just got crushed in every game mode. He is another hero that, as much as I do love the tree, um, he is not even used within the, the tower. He's another hero similar to Cirrus that I just have at level one. Not really any utility within AFK Arena. Then we have the Awakened version of Solus, guys. Now, to date, Awakened version of Solus is the number two priority to build within the Awakened heroes. First one is the Awakened version of Belinda, and then it is the Awakened version of Solus, guys. You can see top tier all the way down the board. Big thing with her is she is the only Awakened support hero that we have seen year to date, or really since they've come out. It's been, what, going on two years now. She is still the only support hero that we have seen, guys, period, which makes her a huge priority to build. She has a lot of damage, a lot of survivability, also brings a lot of buffs to the team, which is exactly why the Awakened version of Solus, again, is a huge, huge priority to build within AFK Arena. Now, there are a couple additional notes down here that you guys can check out. I will put a link down below to these guides. Big shout out again to Rocket A for putting these together. It is really cool to see, and I hope it helped with kind of the, the coverage in here and who you need to build and really focusing on the ones that you don't need to build at all. So that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.